Now, before we go further, before we go further, can you recite what is God? Why is it important? Because after being a Christian for so long, if people ask you, what is God? What do you mean God? Are you able to at least have a definition in your own minds? You may not need to um, explain and say, what is God? And then God is a spirit, infinite, and go on. They don't understand. But with a definition, you are at least in your heart clear about the various aspects about God. It's like someone asks, well, who is your father? Uh, I really cannot describe. I can't describe at all. Not even one word. People will wonder, do you even care about your father? Do you even love your father? Do you, is, is it really even your father? Is it real? Right? It's, it's shameful. It is embarrassing. So the Christian must be able to at least have a definition in your heart. No use being able to regurgitate it, but you don't know what it means. All right? So let us try, all right? Let us try. And I do not know why this is. Now, so um, let's pick one. Um, Anna, what is God? God is a... All right, so it's coming. Very good. So God, God is a spirit. Very good. It begins with that. Okay, ne next term. He is, God is a spirit. Say again. Infinite. Okay, eternal. All right, I'll stop there. And then maybe I'll ask another one. Enoch. All right, Anna, your duty to revise with him today. Okay, next one. Um, CP. Yes, you, only one CP in church. Not CP, CJ. CP just came back, by the way. So I'm just thinking, kept thinking about CP. Unchanging or unchangeable. All right, unchangeable. Very good. He has these three things in his uh, Kelvin. Being. It's not coming up, is it? Oh, okay. Being, yes. Next. Wisdom. Power. Nathan. Holiness. Justice, goodness, and truth. Okay, you will notice why I put it this way. Always remember the picture like that because these are his intransmissible characteristics. These are his transmissible characteristics to men. All right? So God is a spirit. You must know that. What it means, we'll study today. Then later, we must learn what is infinite, eternal, and unchangeable in all these characteristics of him, of his. All these are his characteristics. All right? Or um, we call them attributes. All right? Of course, these are also his attributes. Infinite and eternal and changeable in his, all these things. This is unique to him. All right? This, when God says, be holy for I am holy. When God says, be conformed to the image of Christ. When God says, be like God, be like Christ. What is he saying? He's referring to this area. Okay, so when you say, I want to be Christ-like, how to remember? How is Christ-like in his character? So you must be able to know holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. All right, so memorizing this is not just for fun. It's not just to show off to people. You see, I'm one of those in church that can recite this. It is to help you when you read the Bible. Every time you read, wow, look at God's being. Wow, look at God's um, truth. Wow, look at God's power. You see, you are able to see God very clearly. So remembering this helps you in your study of the word yourself, helps you in being able to explain. Whenever people argue with you about something, straight away with the understanding of these attributes, by the way, each one is supported with God's with God's word, huh? I told you to go read in those pages. You're able to defend. You say, oh, you know, how can God be like that? They say, because God is eternal. Then you explain. Then they begin to, oh, now I understand. You see, the sad thing is, many people, they don't believe in God because 
they don't have an understanding. And then when they ask a Christian, and then the Christian also cannot, cannot defend, cannot give an answer about God. Then it confirms in their heart, if Christians themselves do not know what God is, then their God must be false as well. So the Christian must, must, must be able to have in your heart this, this picture, guideline, memory of the various aspects, all right? So, now today we begin with God is a spirit. What does God is a spirit mean? What does it mean? And therefore, in your heart, how should you view him? How should it change you? These definitions must change you. It changes your prayer. It changes your praise when you come to church. When people ask, God is a spirit, what does it mean? And all you can say is, it's a spirit, that's all. You can't see him, that's all. What does it mean? All right, so now turn to page 21 of your new books, page 5 of your old book, 21 of your new book. Now, what does it mean? God is a spirit. God is a spirit. The nature of God. This describes the nature of God, not just simply that you cannot see him. Okay? Now, so when we say God is a spirit, it is found in John 4, 24. Right? So it's supported with scriptures. God is a spirit. Now, I encourage you to go back. Huh? It's Sunday, right? What are you going to do? Watch TV? Just sleep and sleep? Take their BBK books out and slowly go through these verses. I don't have time to do that. It's BBK is to guide you. Now, when, when God says God is a spirit, it means let us not think of God as if he were a man in human terms. What do you mean when I say God is a spirit? Underline that. I cannot relate him like to... to to men, if, if I see men are like that, men's characteristics are like that, and therefore God is like that. God says, man will make him in, his, in man's image. That is wrong. We have a set idea of what, well, from humankind, human behavior, and mankind, well, then God must be also like that. The Christian must think that God is, God cannot be limited. God, God cannot even be described fully by human words. The Bible says, now, if we were to try and describe God and what he does, there is no amount of books on earth that can contain it. So God is a spirit. He can't be defined and described by men, according to man's idea. But can God be known? Yes. That is why last week we studied, right? God is known through his creation. God is known through his word, more specific. God is known through Christ himself, in the Gospels especially. So own God is a spirit means you have to accept God's description of him from the Bible. That's the only way you know God. Now, if I tell you, well, the, the wind, the wind is, you can't see the wind, right? Can you just make up your mind, actually, wind, wind is this? No, there are scientific facts. Although you can't see it, scientific fact tells you what wind is, right? Why is it that you feel cool when the wind blows and all that? So God reveals himself to us. He is a spirit. Now this is very important because Christians today really make up their own ideas about who God is. They, they hardly come to church. They're not interested in coming to church. They're not, they are not interested in, in studying the word of God in more depth because they said, I have some idea about God. And sometimes even when you speak to Christians, they say, no, 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 God, God is not like that. And today, Christians write books to, to, to insist that God is, is not like that. God does not send anyone to hell because he is love. You see, people make up their own minds. But in the Bible, God says, yes, I do send people to hell. They say, no, God is actually not really God, but an, an idea. Christians, professors, Write that. Right? So God is a spirit. We have to think of God on God's terms. You can't define something you can't see. You can only accept what that is not seen revealing it to you, the word. All right? So please don't take BBK as something, uh, you know, it's too basic for me. We will, we will cover things in details. Now, number one, what is God is a spirit? So every time I ask you, what does it mean in your heart? God cannot be described in human terms. I can't even begin to imagine God. I have to read the Bible to know Him. God is a spirit. 
All right? Yes, he is invisible to our eyes. He's invisible to our eyes. But it's not simply that. Now, the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments, do you know why God gave it to men? It's to tell you, you, sh- you must not worship idols. You must not bow down to them. Not even images of God. The Roman Catholics put out images of God. Yeah, this is Jesus Christ. And God says, don't even do that. Not even in Christianity. Why? Why? Because God is a spirit means the emphasis is you cannot put an unseen thing that cannot be imagined by man's imagination into something that you make with your hands. When the children of Israel worshipped the golden calf, many of you understood that, right? They were not worshipping the gods of Egypt. They were worshipping Jehovah. Please know that. Please know that. When they made the golden calf, in their minds, this is Jehovah. Because Jehovah is someone who provides for us, who, who keeps us alive because provides for us means give us food, give us... And he said, yeah, you know, like the animal, the calf that he, he, he gives to mankind, is, we are so dependent on it. Ah, Jehovah is like that. You see, they limit God to only one aspect. And then they end up making an image in that aspect. So God says, even when you want to worship me, please do not make any physical um, structure. Because the moment you do, God is no longer a spirit to you. It's limited in that image, whatever you portray it to be. It's so infinite, right? So the Christian must be clear in your heart. Do not make God in your own image. Philosophy of the world will present many images of God to you. Today we will learn there will be many, many Christs. A different Jesus, all right? Different gospel. Now, next one. God is a person. Now, God is a person. Why is it important to understand when I say God is a spirit, but yet he's a person? Now, when God, when Moses asked God, who do I say you are? What what is your name? He said, I am that I am. What is I am that I am? Means he is a real being in existence, like I am something, right? Means it's a real existence. So when you say God is a person, not, not human being person, right? Person means God has characteristics. God has attributes. God has a certain, um, God has thoughts, right? God is a being. In other words, God is not just a force. Remember that. Again, why is it important? Now, over time, in, in, even since the apostles' times, there were people over time change, change, change theology to they say, no, God is not a being. God is just an idea. God is an idea. Do you know today many people say God is the creation of man? What do they mean by that? In fact, to just um, a few weeks back, uh, someone said, I went to work and I shared the gospel, all right? And during the, the office meeting, the manager purposely said, there's no such thing as God. As God. God is just the creation of man's imagination. Man, man made up this concept of God, all right? It's just a concept. God is a spirit, but he's a person. And then another was sharing that, you know, um, they know I'm a Christian and Likewise, they say, well, you know, everybody have their own idea about God and they make up their own um, image of God. Because it's I am, that I, I have my personality which I will reveal to you. Now look at your BBK books. For example, Jesus called God the Father. Father, right? There are characteristics about a father. Why choose father? Because there are certain characteristics about a father. And God reveals that God has emotions, God has a will. Now, Christians should understand Hollywood is intent of making God as just a force, just a power in the universe, all right? So those who do not believe in God, the existence of God, for example, the whole concept of, 
of yin yang, yin and yang. What is it? It's just forces that exist in the universe. And these forces work. God is not just a force. God is a being. The Christian must be so clear about that. I have a real relationship with him. He can be known through his word. So like, like Hollywood would say, may the force be with you. What do you think they are trying to portray? Forget about the concept of God. There's just this force, a very powerful force in the universe. That's all. It's like electricity. All right? It's just a force. Yes, can you see electricity? You can't. But there, there, there's a force that does something. That's all. Is like electricity a being? Is electricity um, uh, a person? No. So human beings over time begin to think that God is just a concept or God is a very... There, is, there are forces in this world and that is what it is. That's all. Now, Christians also believe in that today. All right? The liberals, some of the heretic, heretical liberals, they keep saying God is just a concept and yes, it's just a, just, just a force in the universe. That's all. So do not think of God in that way. All right? We study more when we study his characteristics. So it must be important. Now, God is a person means you know he is living. He is living. Don't just think God, God, God. And over time, God is really just a concept to you. The rest of your life for seven days, there is hardly any relationship. Now, imagine your wife, your husband, your parent. All right? I know some of you say, I'm not married, so I don't understand. Then your parent, your child. Can you imagine over time, it's just like a concept. My child is not a being. My parent is not a being. I think sometimes we live like that. For seven days a week, we hardly think of them, talk to them, engage them. Other things are very real, except our parent. It is very strange and very, um, very wrong, all right? So God is a person, is to remind us. God has emotion. God loves us. We love him in return. God is grieved when we sin against him, all right? So not just a concept we have parked at the back of our minds. Now, number three, God is one God. God is one God. Now, again, you can read in 1 Timothy 2.5, God is one God and, and the great Shama, right? Here, O Israel, <clears throat> the Lord, our God is one Lord, right? One. What is this one? What does it mean? Now, there are two things that the Christian must think of God rightly when it comes to one God. Now, it means it's not polytheism. It means it is not our God is just many, many gods, right? The Hindu religion, for example. They believe in myriads of gods, right? Hundreds, thousands, I think, even. Go run into the huge number, gods. So God, 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 a lot of gods, and all these are different gods. But the child of God is to understand that there is only one living and true God. When, when the children of Israel were, were taught to memorize this, the passage, the great, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, is to teach them there is no other God. The heathens around us, their God is not God. There's only one true God in this world, and that is Jehovah. Now, can you accept that? Today, Christians say that we are too proud to say that. But God says from the Old Testament, and then you, you will see 1 Timothy 2.5, God is one God. There's only one. They say we are too proud to say that. Other gods are also, you know, we must, be, we, we must accept that their gods are also God. And to the point over time, when the Christian is not clear, or the, when the Christian is ashamed or fearful, yeah, don't criticize other religion. We are not there to criticize. We are simply saying, the truth is this, there's only one living and true God. We're not criticizing. We're stating the truth to help them to be saved. But Christians over time become so ashamed, fearful of displeasing men that they would say things like what Billy Graham said. All right? Some of you do not know who it is, but I was surprised during holiday Bible program, uh, a teenager 
ask me, what is a visitor that come? Say, what is the church understanding or stand on Billy Graham? I said, oh, this young man reads Billy Graham. Billy Graham just passed away not long ago. He became very famous again. He was always very famous. He's known as one of the greatest Christian, um, some even say, next to Jesus Christ, right? On earth. Very famous. But over time, he also began to say, and I've shown you the videos before in church, he said, well, you know, we cannot insist that Jesus is the only God. Well, you know, as long as you believe in a God, but God says, I am one Lord, means there's only one living God. As long as you believe in a God, whoever that God is, you will go to heaven. That is what the belief is today. So you say, well, you know, isn't this basic? He's the only living and true. Please know, world famous Christian, that people read their books, that people today hail them as one of the greatest Christian on earth, S believe in that. It is not the only God. Any other gods are also pathways to heaven. There's a, a gospel that will lead you to hell because people who believe in, in Buddha, in, in um, whoever, whatever other gods, Guan Ying and all that, they are, they are thinking, oh, through this I can be saved. They won't turn to Jesus Christ for, for salvation. There are Christians today that encourage their children to read, read other religions. They say, please, respect all religions. Read, read all the religions. And when I speak to them, why do you do that? You know, we must, we must let them have a choice. The children of Israel were told, teach your children the great Shema. Here, O Israel, the children were there. Make your children memorize that. The Lord our God is one Lord. What, what is God saying? Tell your child there is only one true God. That is what he's teaching them. The pagans will tell you that their God is also God that will bring you to heaven. So God, the Lord our God is one, one God. That is what it means, one. One and living, true. Now the other one is, it means that he's supreme. Like the Bible, uh, BBK book, he is supreme. The fact that he is the only living and true God means he is the supreme God. All other gods are false, man-made. The supremacy of God, that is what it means. So when you say the Lord our God is one God, for the Christian, not only you must believe that he's the, old, the way, the truth, and the life, you must believe in your heart. Because he is God, then I must, I must worship him. I must serve him. I must obey him. Even if I were not a Christian, he is still God. I'm, I still owe it to, to worship this God and acknowledge he is God. So, supremacy, no use memorizing God is a spirit. And then you don't understand. It means that he is supreme, supreme, beyond our, our imagination and grasp unless he reveals himself to us. So supremacy of God in your life, whenever you think of God is a spirit, must be clear. Now, but then there is the next one, all right? Number four, three persons in one. The Trinity, the Trinity, three persons in one. The Christian must believe in the Trinity. When we say um, God is a spirit, we can't see, right? But yet God reveals one particular aspect that he is one God, but three persons. You cannot deny, all right? Now, first and foremost, how do we know that God is one God? Now, look up here. He is God, but in three persons, persons, huh? So we have God the Father, we have God the Son, we have God the Holy Spirit. When you read the Bible, so look at your BBK book, the baptism of Jesus, the Great Commission, the benediction, the 1 John 5, 7 to 8, you just simply know that God reveals, God reveals to us, or rather God describes to us that he is called the Father. And then there is the Holy Spirit, and then there is the Son. But God the Father is God. 
God the Son is God. God the Holy Spirit is God. Person, God. God reveals. Remember, God is infinite. We cannot grasp, but God reveals. Can you explain how three persons can be one God? You cannot explain. You, you can only describe. Remember that. So let's see. Baptism of Jesus. All right, you go back and read. When Jesus was, was baptized, we saw, we, we read, Jesus was on earth. He went into and out of the water. He stepped into and out of the water. He was baptized. Then the Bible describes the Holy Spirit came upon him, descended upon him as a dove. Then we, they heard the voice from heaven, the Father's voice. So you know that there are indeed three persons in this Godhood. There are three. Now the Christian must not fight against this. You fight against this, you will become a cult. We've been emphasizing again and again, God is a spirit. You cannot see, understand or describe in your own idea. How can it be? How can it be? Yes, you can't know. God revealed to us. All right? Look at the Great Commission, the same. Go into all nations, preach the gospel, baptizing them in, in God's name. That's all. God is very specific in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Again, God mentions three. Why he mentions the Lord God is one God, supreme, only one living and true God, but yet God constantly reveals his three persons. It is a key tenet of the Christian faith. All right? Now, the next one, the benediction. Like on Sundays, when I give the benediction, all right? It is, it is what? In three persons. So you read in the benedictions, there are various benedictions in the Bible. All mentions the three persons. Right? So the grace of God, God says, the grace of God, that's all. No, it's a grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Three. God always mentioned three. He did not say just, just God. That's all. All right, so that's the benediction. For example, the Johannan comma. Now, this one I wish for us to turn to. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 7 to 8. First John chapter 5, verses 7 to 8. Now, let's read together. 7 and 8, reading. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which is the Son, we know, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three are one. Now, God repeatedly said these three are one, these three are one, these three are one. We cannot say, because humanly it can't be explained and therefore I reject it. The fact that God is a spirit means you can't see, you can't know, except it's revealed to you. That is the point when God says God is a spirit. You have to accept that, right? Like it's, it's a little end. With very finite understanding, but ants are often smarter than many, many aspects, right? Finite understand, walk around, and then a, a, a chemistry professor explains to the little ant about the atom. See, I'm an ant, I'm an ant, it's just an ant. What do you mean there are so small things inside me and all that? Can they understand? They just have to accept, oh, that is the truth, that's it. All right, so we must know that God reveals three in one. That is the reality. Now, but one of the key things we have to realize is this. You see, now God says these three are one. So it's one God. These three are one. So God the Father is God. Now, there are many passages. Now, look at your BBK books, point number four. The Father is called God in Romans 1.7. Please know that. God the Father. So the Bible says God the Father is God. Well, that's easier to accept. But it's the Son, God. The Son is Jesus is called God in Hebrews 1.8. Right, turn to Hebrews 1.8. He 
Hebrews 1 8. But the Son, but unto the Son. You see, God the Father speaks to the Son. But unto the Son, he saith. Now, this is quoting the Old Testament. Huh? Please don't think that it's made up in the New Testament. He's quoting the Old Testament. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. What did the Father call the Son? God. He called the Son God. All right? So, the Son is called God. Now, I know many of you know this, but please bear with it because there are many new um, people. They are learning. You will have Muslims come up to you and say, Jesus never called himself God because the Muslims, they believe in, in the Old Testament, so-called belief, all right? They take the Old Testament as their religious book and they only believe that um, there is one God means only one. The Old Testament God mentioned as God is God. All right? Jesus is not God. Jesus is a great prophet. That is all. So you have Muslims come to you. You have Mormons. You have Jehovah Witnesses coming to you. Jesus is not the eternal God. Jesus is a created God. And Jesus is just one of the angels. But he's the greatest of all angels. Christians believe that today. Please know that. In fact, in fact, pastors who are very sound in their preaching, all right, will preach very openly. Please don't talk rubbish. Jesus is not God, all right? Only the Father is God. Now, till today, there are Christians who believe that and they say, you will never find the Muslims who challenge you, the Jehovah Witnesses who challenge you. Jesus never claimed to be God. It's the modern day Christians that turn Jesus into God. Now, is it true? They say, you find a verse in the Bible that Jesus claimed to be God. Well, here is one. Jesus didn't claim, but God the Father called him God. All right? So God the Father is God. God the Father called Jesus God. All right? Now, and they say, Jesus always say, I am the Son. I am the Son. I am the Son. Now, whenever Jesus say, I am the Son, he's claiming to be God. All right? He's claiming to be God. Be very clear about that. Now, when, whenever people say, well, you prove to me that Jesus called himself um, to be God. All right? Now, please, now, please turn your Bibles to John. All right? The Gospel of John. Now, when Jesus, when the people say, now, when the people say that, well, is, are you God? We want to know. Please tell us openly. Please tell us openly. Are you God? Now, what did Jesus tell them? Jesus said, I've told you many times. I've told you many times, but you will not believe me. And then, finally, he says, well, God is my father, and then I am the son. Well, the moment they said that, the Jews picked up stones and wanted to stone Jesus. Whenever you read about them wanting to stone Jesus, do you know what it means? They themselves said, then, he, then Christ asked them, I've done many miracles, and which is the miracle that you want to stone me for? Jesus asked that on purpose. It's not Jesus, oh no, why do you want to stone me? I don't understand. Jesus asked them to reveal to us today and to them that he is saying that he is God. He said, when he asked that, he says, which one? And what did they answer? Jesus wanted to draw the answer from their mouth. They say, well, for your, for your works, we stone you not, but, but because you claim to be the son of God, you blaspheme. Why did he say, just because you say the son of God, you blaspheme? Because the Jews knew very well that when God says the son of God will come, my son will come. They remember the Old Testament passage, what we read. He spoke to the son, O oh God. For Jesus to speak to the Jews, saying that he's the son of God is the clearest claim to be God. That is why they say you blaspheme. Why do you say you blaspheme? Because you being a man claim to be God. Jesus 
claim to be God. So when Christians, you begin to doubt, someone knock on your door, Jesus never claimed. Please show me from your Bible, Jesus claimed. Then you panic, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. There are Christians who have, have left Christianity because they say, yeah, I, it's true. It's true. I cannot tell my Muslim's flatmate that Jesus is God. It's true. And they left Christianity, they became a Muslim, stopped coming to church because of not attending Bible studies. They listen and then they believe. So when, when the Jews wanted to stone him, they say, because you say you're the son, and in saying you're the son, you claim to be God. Jesus claimed to be God. He repeatedly used the word, the son of God. Why? Instead of saying God, because the Greeks have many gods. For him to say, I am God, they say, yeah, fine, you want to claim to be one of the Greek gods, we have no problem. But when Jesus said, I am the son of God, they get very angry. Because the son of God means he claimed to be the real, living, and true Jehovah God. Understand, whenever you read um, the Son of God, the Son of God, the Son of God, he is simply saying, I am God. The surest way of claiming God. All right? So, please don't say, well, he did not claim. He used the strongest way to, to say things, to make sure there is, no, there is no misunderstanding that he's claiming to be some God, small God. He's claiming to be the God by saying, when he says, I am the Son of God. All right? So, please remember that. Okay, now, so, so look up here. So the Bible, uh, sorry, look at your BBK books, I'm sorry. Now, look, so the Bible, Jesus is called God in Hebrews. He claims to be God in, in many places in the Gospel of John. And the Holy Spirit is called God in Acts 5, 3 to 4. Acts 5, 3 to 4. So whenever people ask you, someone went for evangelism and say, actually, pastor, I, someone asked me, well, how do you know the Holy Spirit is God? There are Christians who don't believe in it. The Holy Spirit is just a force. Watch too much Star Wars, all right? It's just a force. Not a real person. Not a real person. But in Acts 5, 3 and 4, go back and read. Ananias and Sapphira lied. What did Peter say? Why do you lie? If you say, why do you lie to the Spirit? Why do you lie to the Holy Ghost? And then later he said, why do you lie to God? So Peter revealed very clearly, the Holy Spirit is God. You're lying to the Holy Spirit. That means you're lying to God, all right? So in scriptures, we have the Bible itself telling us the three are one and also repeatedly emphasizing each individual one being called God. Now, but this is important for the Christian. Whenever you think of the Trinity and say, how do I, how do Think of the Trinity. Remember this picture, all right? So all three, God. But all three, person, person, person. Remember that, okay? But is the Holy Spirit God the Father? No. Is God the Father the Holy Spirit? No. Is God the Father the Son? No. Is the Son the Father? No. Is the Holy Spirit the Son and vice versa? No, 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 all right? There are specific different persons. We sing the hymn, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. I know it's our team, right? God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Their theology is very sound. So you say, I, I cannot, still cannot grasp. Think of this picture. Think of this picture. They're not each other. That's why we always say Sunday school teacher, please don't use human analogy. Just simply explain it as God has explained it. Because people say, well, it's like the egg, right? The egg. We have the shell, we have the yolk, we have the egg white. They say, ah, you see? Use that to explain. It is, you can't. Eh? Yes, this, this is not this, this is not this, this is not this. It's true. It's true. All right? Or some say water, steam, um, and, and ice. All right? But what's the problem with this? Is shell an egg? No. Shell is not an egg. God the Father is God. Is yolk an egg? No. Yolk is yolk. All right? Egg white is egg white. Water is, is water. Steam is steam. Ice is ice. That's it. And they are not by themselves what you describe. All right? You can't say, now come eat an egg. And then you just say eat the shell. All right? So, so do not use this kind of thinking. This is what the Bible explains. Just have this in your mind, in your picture. Now, but there is one big problem. 
which Christians say, well, because of this, then I cannot believe that Jesus is God. Now turn to Psalm 2, all right? Psalm chapter 2, and then you go back and think, and next week I will ask you, uh, Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. Right, when I say there's a problem, I'm not saying that there's a problem with the Bible. There's a problem with our thinking. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. Now, let us read Psalm chapter 2, verse 7, reading. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ha! Huh? So they say, the, the, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Muslims say, you see, Jesus is not the capital G God. Jesus is the small g God. Why? Because God says, thou art my son. You say this refer to Jesus. Yes, it's correct. This day have I begotten thee. This day have I given birth to thee. On this day you were created by me. There was a beginning. Now by definition, God is a spirit, infinite, eternal. Eternal means no beginning, no end. You see, the Bible, your Bible, says that Jesus had a beginning. God created him at some point. So he's just a very powerful angel. He's just one of the gods on this earth. That's it. He was begotten. He had a beginning. So he cannot be God. The capital G, eternal God. How do you explain that? How do you defend that? Do you see why it is important to keep studying the Word of God? Otherwise, over time, you will be shaken. Your child will be shaken. And finally, say, yes, God has a, Jesus has a beginning. I can't explain that. So I think everything that I learned is false. I will become a Jehovah Witness. I will become a Muslim. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say? Why they stop attending church? Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view. Um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from